Bonjour. C'est un plaisir d'être ici ce soir. Um, tonight, I'll be talking to you about an idea that I've been thinking about for a long time in terms of what makes a better country. It is my hope that it doesn't take resources, it doesn't always take money and people. Of course, it takes people, but it takes emotions and feelings and thoughts and empathy. And tonight, I'd like to talk to you about the times when, confronted by unfamiliar events, we claim limits to our imagination. I'd like to discuss those times when we choose not to imagine someone's circumstances. And in my argument, I talk about the fact that limiting our imagination results in denial of a true understanding of the human connection, of the common human connection. A few years ago, I gave a TEDx talk on the falsity of assumptions that we can overcome adversity. Using some very personal experiences, I theorized that rather than overcoming adversity, we transform it into a tame ghost that walks alongside us but never disappears from our lives. As people spoke with me after the event, one after another, they noted that they couldn't imagine some of the incidents I had discussed because those incidents involved living in a war zone, something they had never undergone. While they expressed empathy, they explicitly noted their imagination was limited to their lived experiences. At that very moment, the expression, I can't imagine what you must have gone through, suggested that people who had not experienced what I had seen could not picture it which at that time I found troubling since I believe that the human imagination knows almost no bounds. And I also think that inability to imagine keeps us from truly understanding one another. Author J.K. Rowling of Harry Potter fame once said that, unlike any other creatures on this planet, human beings can understand without having experienced. They can think of themselves into other people's places. I believe that universal human, human experiences, such as the elation we feel when a child is born, extreme sadness when a life is prematurely lost to accidents or violence, and things as basic and perhaps banal as a sense of frustration when we're stuck awaiting in a lineup represent those human experiences. Most of us don't need to experience these situations ourselves to instantly feel related emotions when someone brings them up. Anthony Kwame Apia, philosophy professor at New York University, argues that when we become familiar with someone or aspects of their story, we can form a universal human connection if both sides choose to participate. That is, the side that shares the experience and the other side that chooses to understand it. In essence, if we deny our ability to imagine an experience someone has shared with us, we deny recognizing that universality. Words matter. They make a difference in influencing our brain as well as influencing the minds of people around us. News of international incidents saddens us, but we have a hard time placing ourselves in the situations news reporters try so hard to convey through their stories. So what inspires our disconnect? Is it that we haven't experienced a certain kind of situation? Events are in our community suggest otherwise. Every year on Human Rights Day, thousands of Canadians come together to write letters urging politicians and policymakers to uphold human rights obligations. Without undergoing the sort of persecution individuals on whose behalf they write their letters, Canadians act to protect rights because they can imagine what life without them is like. Most of these individuals have not experienced war, conflict, torture, or abuse, and yet they act with passion equal at times to many who have. I admit that there's something unique in the empathy resulting from a shared experience as opposed to imagining it, but do we go too far when we suggest that all experiences we undergo are unique and that unless someone has traveled the same path as us, they cannot claim to understand them? A few years after moving from Kosovo to St. John's with my parents, friends took us to a grocery store in a rural community. As we lined up with our jars of relish and blueberry jam in hand, 
We overheard the customer in front expressing her hopes for the return of her husband. When we asked, the store clerk told us her husband was lost in a fishing accident and his body was never recovered. This woman continued to believe that her husband was surf would surface alive again someday. At a time when my own brother was missing from the war in Kosovo, I knew, that she, I knew what she was going through. Our circumstances were very different. And yet we both understood the value of losing family senselessly and the value of keeping hope alive against all odds. I recognized her defense mechanism because it was the very same defense mechanism my mom used. At that very moment, I could imagine her loss, but so could the store clerk. She hadn't lost anyone to a fishing accident, but the tears streaming down her face said it all. Her sadness reflected an understanding of the very real human experience of loss and of a sort of empathy that showed a desire to help. We can imagine and understand someone's experience without empathizing, but true empathy can only come from our choice to take the risk of imagining and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable to our emotions and reactions. Someone's loss of a family pet or a family member's loss of a job, a divorce, can be major destabilizing events that don't require us to undergo those experiences ourselves to warrant actions of solidarity. Empathy that leads to understanding helps us mobilize to act to support others. In a conversation in Beijing just last weekend, actually, uh, a friend questioned whether our ability to imagine can truly extend to the experiences we haven't had. Can someone who has never experienced extreme poverty understand it? And if so, do they have the agency to act on what they think is needed without having had that direct experience? These are bigger questions to ponder at another time. We live in a time when national and international events require more of our ability to imagine and subsequently connect to others by trying to empathize with and ultimately understand their stories. The human experience is common to all of us. The kind of Canada I desire is one of more imagination and empathy and of understanding this human experience we all share. It begins with never again categorically saying we can't imagine another human's pain, suffering, happiness, or joy, regardless of whether or not we have gone through it. It begins with striving to understand one another. This is the kind of Canada I imagine and desire. Thank you. <laughs>